Well, good morning and welcome to day 24 of my 30-day backpack adventure. Of Muir Trail Ranch and I'm going down there now to um, charge my electronics and do the resupply get my resupply and then after that there are these hot springs nearby so I thought um, and it's a little bit of a trek to get to them you have to like go down a little trail and hang on to a rope and ford a creek and go through the bushes and find them or whatever, but uh, I'm gonna go for it because I haven't had a shower in like, I don't know, eight, nine days. It's been a really long time. So, and my muscles are so tired from the last two days because they were pretty, pretty long days for me. I mean, even last night, I didn't sleep that well. I tossed and turned a lot and my legs felt achy and so I just think I need to sit in those hot springs before I get on with my day today. So I won't be hiking as far today. Um, we'll see how far I get. I do need to get up close to Selden Pass, up to the top, not to the very top, but close to the top if I can so that I can get over it tomorrow. And then I'll have to really hustle to get to VVR, which is where my real zero day begins. And here's everybody waiting for the grand opening. Kitty! Hi, Kitty! Hi! Oh my gosh, you're so cute! You're purring! Can you hear it? Where's the rest of your group? I don't really have a group. I'm sort of a lone ranger, if you know yeah. what I mean. My group kind of comes and goes. Okay. <laughs> you were camping with a few people down at Horseshoe. Right? That's right. Those two ladies, they are super fast athletic, so they're oh, two okay. days ahead of me. Gotcha. Yep, so it's okay. I poke along. Yeah. Horses are over there. Yeah, between because he's a YouTube oh. star and he would've been like, mm -hmm. Okay, inside Muir Trail Ranch. It's so cute. Look at those little buildings. And most importantly, power. Everybody's stuff, man. This is my pile of stuff. This is where this. 14 ounces of pain comes in handy. All right. Hi there. Hi. Cone, C O H N. Everybody's so excited for their food. Famous hiker boxes of Muir Trail Ranch. Ooh, toilet paper. First aid. God, they're so organized. Gear, books, and maps. There's Captain Uber, right? Pardon me. Got this. Oatmeal, trail mix, peanut butter, and jelly has its own bin. Oh my God. Vegetarian Very cool. Today. There's yeah, cougar bait. Yeah, this is such a pretty place. There are the horses. Little sheds. Or I think those are oh, those are the little cabins. How cute. Thanks. 
So all these buckets come up via pack animals. Whoa. And looks like my looks like my M&Ms had a rough ride. That's okay. There's still M&Ms. Yep, just organizing everything out of this bucket and into the bear bag. Kitty Rock. Hello. <laughs> Kitty is so cute. Whoops. Not the best shot of you. Kitty kitty. How did my Delorme end up on the ground? How did that happen? Oh, I just love kitty kitties. Yes, you're so adorable. I'm gonna use all my battery on you, kitty kitty. Meow. There goes Team Zero. Woohoo! The horses getting ready for their day. Okay, so I got my resupply at New Trail Ranch and it was pretty cool. It was like this trail family reunion. I saw Team Zero, who I didn't think I'd ever see again, but they said Bishop was wonderful to them, um, which is why they had gotten behind. And I saw Vortex and Snake, AKA Dave and Wes, who um, had run out of food and were really happy to be there. And, um, oh, and Cougar Bait who I met way back in Horseshoe Meadows, who was PCT famous for having all those cougars stalk him. Literally, cougars, not women, cougars. <laughs> so it was cool to see everybody. I don't know what happened to Feisty. She just must have moved on yesterday. And uh, yeah, it was a really nice place. Hung out for about an hour and a half, just getting my stuff charged. I mean, the anchor battery only got charged a little bit. Oh man, I don't have any bug spray with me. Oh well. Um, so, you know, but I did get my phone fully charged and I got the Delorme almost charged and I worked on a couple of camera batteries, so partial charges for them. I wonder if I should go back for the bug spray. I don't know. Hopefully, I don't know. So what I'm doing now, and I'm a little nervous about doing it by myself, but we'll see. If it looks too sketchy, I won't go through with it. But I'm hiking down to Blaney Springs, which isn't that far. Basically, you hike down to the river, and then there's some sign with instructions for camping. And you look to the left of that, I think, and there's a rope. And the river is kind of swift, but it's only knee deep. Or if you're a kid, thigh deep, <laughs> according to the young man I talked to last night. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so you can use the rope to get across. And then on the other side, I guess there's a little footpath to the springs through some barbed wire and whatever. So it's kind of a treasure hunt. And like I said, I'm a little nervous about doing it by myself, but uh, well, let's just go for it because I, I haven't had a shower like I mentioned before in like eight or nine days and I could really use a good soak and my muscles have been working so hard I think it you know they deserve a treat oh it's people down here well you are here Let's see, so go left, cross, use a trail to Hot Springs, private property. Okay, so let's keep going. Woo, here's the river. It is wide and swift. Where is the rope? Don't see a rope. Oh, there's the rope. It's to the right, not the left. 
Okay, so this is the challenge, getting across this thing. But these really cool hikers told me how to do it. Basically, the deepest part's here in the shade. It gets shallower out there. And they said if you just sort of let the, make sure the rope's taut the whole time, I should be okay. So, all right. I'm going to gear up. These are the nice people who helped me. I'm going to gear up and go over. Okay, I did it. Boy, that first part was really challenging because it was about thigh high in the shade and the force of the water is really, really strong. So you really had to kind of lean back on the rope to keep it taut, just like he said, and then go one foot at a time, like make sure one foot's down before you move the other foot. And I'm really glad that I wore my real shoes, which is the advice another hiker at Muir Trail Ranch gave me. He said, because I said, should I wear my aqua shoes? He's like, meh. He was worried about being um, like, you know, he's a big guy and he was worried about being like falling over. So I'm glad I wore my real shoes. Okay, and those two people who were on the other side who helped me, um, they told me where the best hot tub is. So I'm going for it right now. Oh, it's a pretty meadow. cute these little flowers are. All right, this is the recommended one behind the fence. And looks like I have it all to myself for the moment. Okay, so it looks really nasty because it's all black and you put your feet down and it's not touching bottom, but if you have a little leap of faith and you just slide on in, there is a bottom. I'm guessing it's three and a half feet and the bottom is, it feels slimy like there's stuff down there, but, and there's dead bugs all over the surface. Is this recording? Yeah, good, okay. But it feels great. It's probably, I wanna say it's 102 or 103, just my guess. Not quite perfect 104, but awesome for being in the wilderness, so yeah. I'll be spending a few minutes here. It was worth the trek. Nature's hot tub. You see the water boiling up over there? It's probably where it gets a little hotter. That was super refreshing. And back we go. Time to hit, pack up and hit the trail. That is not an easy crossing, even the second time. It's okay until you get to the thigh high, deeper part where the current is really strong. And then you have to just hold on and take it slow. Whew, glad that's over. So my feet have been soaked for the day, foot therapy taken care of. I need to grab some water and then I'm gonna pack up and go. And I'm hoping it doesn't rain too hard on me today. Okay, so it's at about 11.40 and I'm leaving my lovely little camp near Mule, Muir Trail Ranch. And it's time to get back on the trail. I have about a 2.1 mile hot hot climb ahead of me before I get to the next water. So I'm hoping this one liter with electrolytes will be okay for me. And it's hot out. Clouds are gathering, so I'm almost kind of hoping for maybe a little bit of rain, not too much. One of the nicest things about yesterday is that it didn't hardly rain on me at all. It was amazing. <laughs>
family passed me by as I was huffing and puffing up the hill. And one of the guys goes, you're doing awesome. <laughs> and it's so silly, but it's like, thank you. <laughs> it's just little things like that. It's so nice to hear. So thank you, random trail guy, for the mini pep talk. It helps. And then once in a while, you just gotta stop and breathe. But it's worth it for these views. That's why I suffer. It's for the views. are getting better. Taking a break. Enjoying the view. It's a big mountain. I have another mile and I have to go to water. I'm rationing. So as I <clears throat> was sitting down taking a break, this big Japanese tour group passed me. And they're um, maybe a little older than me. And their pace is really slow. It's perfect. So I think I'm gonna trail them for a while. They're good motivation. And they're the nicest people too. Hello. Hello. Oh, a nice breeze. <laughs> to take a break is very smack in the middle of the trail. So here I sit, just for a minute. Oh my god, water. Yay! This is pretty meadow. So we're above 10,000 feet, and this is my first glimpse of big mountains. Maybe the pass is to the left. Still working on the approach to Selden Pass, but look at this pretty meadow. It's so beautiful. Well, I'm getting closer to the top of Selden Pass. I'm about a mile away from Sally Keys Lake, which there's a couple camp spots on either end of the lake and that's it before going over. So it's either walk a mile or two more to these campsites or four miles to get over the top and down to Marie Lakes where the first campsites are. If I don't do, if I go over to Marie Lakes, which would be hard um, at the end of the day when I'm tired, but the weather looks okay. I mean, there are clouds, but they don't look stormy. So that would keep me on schedule for getting to VVR um, for the morning boat the day after tomorrow which I believe. So if I get to Marie Lakes, I think it would have been a 10 mile day or something like that. And then, and then the next day would be like nine something. So it would all be reasonable. And if I stop short, 
then I have to do more miles tomorrow. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna get to the lake and figure it out. But you know, it's nice to be alone in a way because I can just make all these decisions based on how I feel. So that's one of the advantages, being out here by my lonesome. I get to be the boss of me. Check out this little random cabin in the woods. It's not on the map. Maybe an old ranger station? I don't know. Pretty cool. But look at the cute little meadow it sits on. And more big views. Meadow here and a bigger one out through those trees. I'm sorry I can't walk over there. I'm too tired. This is the outlet of Sally Keys Lake. And what a pretty lake it is. It's so gardeny. Look at the flowers and the stream going out into the meadow. It's just gorgeous. It's a pretty lake. Okay, I'm calling it. I'm gonna stay right here at Sally Keys Lake. I found this great little spot above the lake. It's really pretty and woodsy and quiet. And I just don't feel like walking anymore today. And it's getting cloudy and it might sprinkle, so I think I'll just set up camp. And tomorrow I have 14.9 miles to get to the Vermilion Valley Resort Ferry, which is more than I can do in one day. So I may have to figure out a way to do maybe 12 or 13. And then maybe really just get up butt early in the morning to do the final few to catch the um, the 945 ferry. That's the plan. I can't find my awesome little head pillow anywhere. I don't know where it is. I've looked through everything like five times. I can't find it. The last time I remember seeing it was this morning when I packed it up into its little case and then I set it next to the other things on my right that I always set it next to and that's it. I don't remember seeing it after that. It's so weird. I didn't take it out of my tent. I don't know. I mean... Do you think someone might have taken it out of my tent while I was gone at the at the hot springs? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Because it was literally right there with all the other stuff. I can't believe someone would do that, but I don't know. More likely, I mean, it's gotta be somewhere. <gasps> I can't stand losing stuff like this. The internet loves cats. Kittens are the best. Ah! I just cleaned the lens. How could you do that? Oh my god. 